Okay, we're live. You know, folks, there's no doubt in my mind, okay? If you're in doubt, well, jerk his jaw out. Oftentimes, fish strike very soft. And you might as well just go ahead and jerk. Good evening, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. This evening, it is a pleasure for Mama Sue and I to answer any Q&A questions you have. And I want to start this off by saying God bless each and every one of y'all. If anybody's got something, well, right. we'll answer it based on our ability. Have we done got a question? Well, first off, I was going to ask the chat if they can hear me good because I'm going to read the questions. So can y'all let me know if you can hear me good? I'll be reading the questions for Richard Jean. Loud and clear. Awesome. Good. All right. Uh, I'll just start reading some of these to you. Some of them's questions. Some of them, uh, we'll just include them in the video. So, uh, Anthony Oliver has a question. How old were you when you first started fishing? Six years old. Six years old, my daddy started me fishing uh, with a cane pole in Florida, in, in canals. Do uh, you have any tips? Donald Bailey wants to know if you have any tips on finding crappie in the winter in Kentucky. Uh, well, <clears throat> it depends on what kind of lake you're fishing. Um, here uh, on the Tennessee River in Gunnersville Lake, see the lakes could be different. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you're fishing in a highland lake or, or or what, but what I do for any species of fish, whether it's blue cat, channel cat, um, flathead cat, any species, crappie, bass, I follow the migration, the movement of shad. Very important, important to do that. So I follow the bait fish, then I look for structure, and cover cover on structure and um, that's the best advice i can i can tell anybody to keep close to the, the bait fish uh ron hall says merry christmas merry christmas to you ron merry christmas still learning wants to know how not to get snagged fishing lay downs for crappie um if you'll give me just a second Just a second. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Frank Jackson says, Happy Holidays, Mr. and Mrs. Jean. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Now, what was the young man who asked the first question? Uh, <coughs> he wants to know how not to get snagged and lay downs. This is how. Make yourself a weedless jig. That's a 40-pound test weed guard. Use a jig as light as you possibly can. I like a 132nd of an ounce. And I have videos that show how to put your own weed guard in a jig. It's inexpensive and quick. Did they get a good shot of that? Yeah. Okay. JC, any tips for trophy blue cats this time of year? Yes, and I haven't been doing enough of it. Big... Uh, you don't ne really necessarily have to use big baits uh, here in the Tennessee River. I'm just talking about here in the Tennessee River, but any river system. Uh, for the most part, the fish are going to be deep. But then um, I, it goes back to the first question. Stay where the bait is. Always look for the bait and then anchor in those situations where there's a lot of bait around. And then fish shad. Cut shad's what I like to use. Uh, let's see. Michael Duvall wants to know what is a good catfish reel? <laughs> ambassador which series? Well, he's got it right. When he said ambassador, he said something. This is a 6500 C3 ambassador reel. Wide spool right here folks 
uh, it can hold a lot of line. It's called the Catfish Special. You can get these at Bass Pro Shop. That's where I bought this one. Very, very good reel for big catfish, no doubt. Okay, Jonathan uh, Barnes wants to know, when throwing those tiny jigs, how do you cast them out so far? Uh, you, it, you have to pick a rod that has a whip that's really limber. Um, that has a, about midway of the rod, it's flexible, and the rest of it's backbone. And uh, it's important to, to have a long rod, six and a half foot, seven foot. One that's got a lot of whip. On the back cast, it'll actually bend, and when you launch it, it'll, it'll fire that bait out there. Rod, <clears throat> the rod is very important for distance, picking the right rod. All right, I a, hope that answered that. Here's a funny one. Oh, uh, setting hooks and crossing eyes. Once this is a question from Mama Sue. Uh oh. How do I get my wife to let me go fishing as much as Richard does? <laughs> I don't think I want to answer. Yeah, answer that. <laughs> she likes to eat fish. That's yeah. Uh, wife really likes to eat fish. That's one reason that she would let you go. And I do. I I love to pan fish. Let's see. Uh, Josh Brooks. When do you think crappie is the most active or what is the best season for crappie? Right now is not bad. Um, probably mid-fall. The winter fishing is probably my favorite. And the springtime is not too bad either. But right now the fish are actually starting to group up a little bit better. They, they've been pretty well scattered. I would rather fish with scattered crappie. They're the biggest. And that's what I've been doing with the underspin. I've been, <coughs> been finding fish where there's not even supposed to be any fish, folks, by the techniques that I use. But... Um, I hope that answered your question. Um, Marty wants to, Marty wants to know when is Mama Sue going fishing again? Probably when it's warm going. Uh, yeah, <laughs> when, it, when it warms up because right now the temperature is dropping and you could really tell. Yeah, first of all, folks, I'm not going to talk for Mama Sue, but I will say this. Everything's got to be just so, so imperfect for Mama Sue. And I mean, everything's got to be just mm, spot on. And that's the reason why I, I would like for her to fish with me more than what she does. And the fact but, that I've got two corgi babies that I'm raising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got two little corgis. And where'd you get them from? Uh, her name is uh, Christy Walker. Uh, Walker's <coughs> Corgis. And, uh, and yeah, she raises some... She lives in Center, Alabama. Center, Alabama. Good gal, folks. Yeah, she's very, very uh, good at what she does. They are so healthy, and I, we just love them. But everything's got to be perfect. I'll just... That's probably the only question I'm going to answer for her, but... I'm still Floridian. <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't really like the cold too much. I love, mm -hmm. I lost the comment, but someone's wondering how come you don't do top water fishing? Well, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of things I haven't even shown on this channel. Um, I tournament fish for many, many every year. I mean, and there's a lot of things that I do know about bass fishing, but the reason why I don't do it is because most people request crappie videos on this channel. And so I'm just trying to please the majority of people. But uh, we've actually got some videos back that I've been fishing really hard the last three or four weeks of different species. So we're going, y'all going to see that different stuff. But uh, yeah, that's the main reason most people love to watch my crappie videos. I'm just trying to please folks the best I can this is a fishing channel 
Keith Reed says, hey there, we love watching you fish. From thank Ke you. From Kenny and Jenny from Tennessee. Well, Kenny and Jenny from Tennessee, thank you very much. And uh, I can't say the first name, but Beckham. Beckham. Are lily pads a good structure for crappie? They sure are um, in um, central Florida when I was a kid. And uh, there were a lot of lakes that had lily pads and a lot of times speckled perch, which are crappie, would relate to them. They'd use them as shade as the bass would. But uh, lily pads is great cover. Uh, matter of fact, in Tennessee, what's the name of that? Race, Race Costello, is that how you pronounce his name? I think so. Invited us to Tennessee, the real foot lake, folks. And I like to shoot a video down there. That is the is what they fish as lily pads for big, huge crappie. Um, we're gonna be try, we're gonna try to make a video doing that too later on. Like I got cypress trees. Cypress trees. I have a good friend named Race Costello. Is that how you pronounce it? Um. I'm thinking maybe it's close. He's a good friend, but it's a hard name for me They'll to probably pronounce. Tell you. <laughs> and his wife, she just sweet as she can be. Yeah, Tina. Yeah. Tina. Mm -hmm. So if y'all are watching, hey. Brian, the fisherman baker wants to know uh, which of the crappie underspins do you prefer? To be honest with you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's gonna be a finesse underspin, the one thirty second of an ounce and one sixteenth of an ounce. And the reason is, is because the shaft on the underside of the underspin is longer than all the others and the blade does not hit the body. It, it, uh, it, uh, you can kill that bait and the blade is still fall, a spin on the fall and the other end underspins are not like that. So the finesse underspin is no doubt the best, the best. But I use several different types, but uh, that's the best one, in my opinion. Uh, Hammer and Hank. Hammer and Hank! <laughs> Woo! He wants the Mama Sue to give us a good uh, fish, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you. A good one, Mom. You got to get a drillage. That good a drillage that you got. <laughs> the kind that you give me when you I get mad at me. That coffee I just got through drinking. Go oh, fishing when you can because it's good for you. There you go, woman. That's the way you're supposed to be doing it. <laughs> Instead of sitting over <laughs> looking like you've been sucking on a lemon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't care, folks. I'm nuts. Did I really don't. I lost the, <laughs> the name here. <laughs> See, I'm still a rooster. Um, Josh Burnshire wants to know how he can catch uh, more fish from the bank during the the winter time. Yeah, go to be specific locations. Now I'm gonna tell you around here. <laughs> I know several places to do that, and they're usually gonna be under a bridge usually going to be up under a bridge and the reason why bridges are so so good is because most bridges restrict two bodies of water in other words you have the bridge it's narrow you have a big body of water on this side normally and a big body of water on the other side and it it just it's kind of like a funnel holds a lot of shad suspended around those columns and those crappie well, they'll die on them all winter long. That's why bridges are so hard for me to fish here on Gunnersville Lake because a lot of times you got to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning in the winter time and get tied up. And I'm not kidding about that. So my crappie fishing, I just get out here and I hunt them. And it's a lot of hard work, but I, but I can find them, find them places where it's not even pressured. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, I hope that answered the question. Okay, so this is a kind of a special request. DV8 Outdoors. DV8 Outdoors. He wants you to do just that. He wants you to scream his name so he can use it as a YouTube intro. Well, hello, folks. It's DV8 
V8 out doors. Whoa! You might want to put some of that in there. See that? I want to explain that because a lot of people don't understand it. And it's my job to explain what people don't understand. The reason I do this, that's kind of like how a car does. Uh, Andro Malina, Malina, hey Richard, do you have any tips for bass fishing in ponds and lakes this time of year? <coughs> Another question, one more time. Uh, bass fishing tips for bass fishing in ponds and lakes. For this ponds time, and lakes this time of year. Well, <clears throat> on Gunnersville Lake right now, I'm gonna tell you. I, I realize the fact that live scope is a big deal, and everybody's targeting suspended fish over creek channels, big fish, and things of that nature. Um, it's changing fishing a whole lot. But as far as catching numbers of fish, uh, folks, those fish is going to stay shallow in the most of these lakes, especially lakes that has vegetation. Spinner baits, slow rolling spinner baits, even if the water temperature is 50 degrees, they'll kill it. Um, slow moving lures, like a trick worm works well, cannot beat a jig. Um, bait, baits like that. Hey, jerk baits is a great thing to use. Uh, I need to start doing some of that. I realize it, but <laughs> there's a lot of things that I, I know that I haven't even done on this channel, believe it or not. I hope that answered your question. David Scott just says he's a big fan and just wanted to say thanks. Well, thank you. Okay, let's see. What was his name? David Scott. David Scott, thank you. Uh, Mark, there it is. I keep, I'm having trouble here. Mark, Mark, Keith Beckham, are crappie deep right now in this weather? No. Um, you know, I've, I've shown this many times to be true. If you'll watch my fishing, uh, in the wintertime, I'll, I'll catch them deep sometimes. I'll catch them in three and four feet of water, eight to ten feet of water. There can be several patterns going on on that day, on any given day, when it comes to crappie. Uh, there is no definite one pattern that there can be a lot of different things going on, just like bass. They can be shallow water bass, mid-depth, and deep bass on any lake at any given time, on any given day. Um. Daryl Clinton Outdoors, he wants to know, you got any tips on how to be successful with the YouTube channel? Be yourself, and I am being myself, folks, 100%. Uh, Have fun. And have fun. Just, okay. And, you know, a lot of people, I'm going to bring religion into it just a little bit. I have a tremendous amount of faith in the Lord. And I let him guide me what I, with what I say and do. And I'm totally dependent on him. Without him, I'm nothing. And that has a lot to do with it. And it makes me want to squall. But that's very important also to remember that you're only human. Okay. Do the best you can do. Um, do that. See. Trying to slow down the chat, I'm sorry. Because without oh. him I'm listening. Okay. Keith Nelson, in your opinion, does the moon or rain have an effect on whether fish will bite? Sure does. I mean they both do. But what I do, just like when we name this channel, go I mean, go fishing when you can because it's good for you. Even though you have negative weather conditions, and we've fished in a lot of them for the last seven years that I've been on this channel, um, you can use certain techniques to at least catch a few of these fish. So um, there's nothing easy about fishing under bad conditions, um, but the challenge is to get those fish to bite 
that they say that ain't biting. And that's what I love about fishing. It's a spore. Second to none. Okay, we got a super chat from Local Life Outdoors. Watching and supporting from South Carolina. You've been a huge inspiration to my channel, Local Life Outdoors. Love to fish with you one day. Local Life Outdoors. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> that makes me... <sighs> I, do the, I do the best I can. And thank you for that great comment. Michael Fortino, Christ is King. Amen. That's right, Michael. Uh, and, and, and let everybody know <laughs> who died on the cross for you, for our sins. Let them know. Do not be ashamed of Jesus. Never. 501 Pan Fishing. And Savior. Does barometric pressure affect fishing? If so, how does it? Barometric pressure. Uh, when it, let me explain to you what it actually does. A lot of people know this, some don't. When it comes to fishing for trophy catfish, if the barometric pressure is high, it's hard to get them to bite, folks. They'll, they don't, they're not active. Why? Because their air bladder is expanded. And what it does, that's the effects it has on, on a big catfish. It, it actually imbalances the fish. They don't feel good. And it's the same way with a lot of different fish. Bass is notorious for that. In fact, um, largemouth or the black bass, uh-oh, in Florida, the black bass is the hardest fish to catch after a cold front um, because of that reason. That rod's one to fall, ain't it? But when it comes to crappie, barometric pressure does not hurt on those fish that keep biting. Crappie I've seen um, uh, fronts actually stimulate the bite for, from a crappie. They bite more. They're, they're a little different. I hope that answered that. Uh, Some fish are affected by it. Some others aren't. A couple of super thanks. One from Clicker. <coughs> and What's a super thanks? It's like when they give a donate to the stream. Jack Mitchell... Shout out Barrett Cole. Oh! Shout out Barrett Cole, or Barrett Cole, Barrett Cole. Now what's the names again? I think it's Barrett Cole. Barrett Cole, shout out to Barrett Cole. Sardis City, Alabama. Sardis City, Alabama, and thank you. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, thank I, you very I much. that was a thing too. When it first popped up, I didn't know what it was. What's your, uh, what's your PB crappie? It was close to three pounds. I remember that. I caught it in the farm pond. It was a white crappie, folks, that somebody put in there. And um, there wasn't a bunch of crappie in there. There's four or five in there. But I caught it on a rebel pop art on the top water bay. I kid you not. Big white crappie. That thing was was huge. But it come up there and hit it just like a bass. I know that sounds funny, but that's the truth. Uh, Sam, a lot of people's asking about catching cooks and, and Mama Sue's favorite recipe for crappie. Are we ever going to do one, an actual catching cook, where they want to see Pops do a clean the crappie and then Mom cook it? And yeah. Oh, we, we can. We can. Were you obligated to do it in that, baby? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, someone wants you to go, remember, go fishing when you can because it's good for you. It's good for but, you. Uh, fishing will teach you a lot of different things. It'll teach you patience. It'll teach you, well, to be stubborn. Stubborn and patience go hand in hand. Um, it'll teach you to, to respect the outdoors. Uh, you know, the worst thing you can do is uh, fish from the bank and throw down a, a can or a bunch of trash or something like that. And, I mean, we shouldn't be doing that. I seen some of that the other day, and it just tore me up. Uh, 
This is a good one. Clem MC37. What is Mama Sue's biggest catch? As far as crappie? Well, uh. Or any fish. I think it was that big flathead, wouldn't it? Or, yeah. Or did you hook big, that one? Catfish. No, no, that was really your daddy because. Well, I really, the rod it. holder hooked it. Oh. But, but it was Mama's fish. I wanted her. It was Mama's fish. And how big, it was a flathead. How big oh, was it? Oh, it was over 50, folks. I didn't have no scales with me, but I've caught a bunch of flathead. 50 pounds or better. It was over. Yeah. But she didn't, she wouldn't land it. It's on video. My she body was shaking because I, you told me I was holding it wrong. I had to hold it right here on my. Well, I was telling you to take the butt of the rod and stick it here in your side and pull down pressure, and then that way you could control. But you was wanting to, to use your risk, and, and you can't do that with a big fish like that. Well, it, I, there, I just felt my body shaking because I was trying to, you know, you know, see it. And but anyhow, it, it was her fish. And my biggest uh, crappie was that one-eyed one that I caught underneath the bridge. You know, it only had one eye. It had a problem with his other eye. Oh, yeah, that one was two and a half pounds or better. It was a big black crappie. Mm -hmm. Uh, sea fishing. Thank you for the. He, he, he uh, sent a super thanks. So, super thanks. That's where they uh, donate to the stream, folks. Y'all don't have to do that, but thank you very much. I mean, and he says, "That's appreciated." What's his name? Sea fishing. Sea fishing. Thank you. You're the man, Gene. God bless you and your family. Roll time. God bless you. I'm curious. What's the largest spotted bass that you can remember? I've caught. It was. It was a. Uh, Right at six pounds, and I caught it at Weiss Lake. My daddy was with me, and I caught it on a Carolina rig. It was a, a solid centered black zoom lizard, and I caught it on a hump right in the middle of the summer. It was almost six pounds. Mr. Stomp Down Fisherman, please ask him to Who? say, Mr. Stomp Down Fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> please ask him to say, let's catch another one. Let's catch another. Let's see. <laughs> Let me slow the chat down. For These a names gets me now. Oh, one of them slop bucket. Remember that? What? Slop bucket. <laughs> Alex MLD wants to know what's your favorite scent for artificials. For artificials, I have a lot of them. Let me see right here. Slop bucket, yeah. <laughs> well, this is slab sauce. And uh, it's great on, on um, I don't use it on my plastics, but now I'll use it um, on hair jigs. It'll stay in the hair jigs for a long time. And I believe in a mask human odor, you know, like gas and oil, human odor and stuff like that. And this is yum crawfish scent. This is what I used when I was fishing tournaments, I think, and I use that on everything. But the fact of the matter is, the best scent that you can use, um, these are fine, but you can catch a crappie and then wipe the slime from that crappie onto your bait and you got the best mask as far as odor. Hey, that's the that's the best you can get, folks. Uh, that's just my opinion. But uh, those are the two that I use when I use them. Rob, I'm sorry. I didn't go ahead. Uh, Robert Miller wants to know if crappie fishing in the winter in the south, uh, do you have to fish deep or is that a misconception? It's a misconception. Like I was saying, it depends on where the shad are. See, what happens is they can be shad deep. You know, the little thread fin shad, the old inch and three quarter, two inch variety, inch and a half. And then the weather can warm up here for two or three days. We can have a lot of sunlight. Those fish are actually, those shad will come up shallow in, oh, six and eight feet of water out of 25 and 30, you know, during this time. And then those crappie will just follow. That's why shallow water fishing for crappie here in the south um, is, is almost always excellent in the wintertime. 
Um, then all of a sudden you'll have a cold front and the temperatures will drop and the fish will tend to go a little bit deeper. See, they're all over the lake. Uh, crappie fishing here in the south is, is like hunting deer. you got to hunt them. <laughs> a lot of hunting involved before you unlock the lock where the fish are. Uh, Mountain Bastard left the super thanks. He says, enjoy the channel and the comic relief. God bless. God bless you, Mountain what? Basser. Mountain Basser. Uh, Gunner and Archer yeah. Hines, Richard, give me a woo. Woo! <laughs> Dog, go. Woo! That was bad for Woody. Uh, Sam Joyner, do you like hunting at all? I love hunting. I, I did that for years. My daddy was a hunter. We, in Florida, we hunted for hog, squirrel, uh, deer, and, well, that's what we'd eat. I mean, we eat what we hunted, and everything that we caught, we eat. That's how we done back then, wasn't it? But uh, now, now that I'm older, I can't explain it. When you get older, you get kind of, or I am, soft-hearted about shooting mm -hmm. a deer. They're beautiful. Um, I've changed the way I feel about things. I would rather catch a fish. <laughs> I mean, if that makes any sense. Although, there's nothing wrong with hunting. God made everything to eat. So, it's it's a good thing. Battle Bend Outdoors wants to know what part of Florida were you from? Uh, around Riverview. Well, that's, that's where I was raised. And went to the school at East Bay High School is where we went to school. Uh, I lived right there, very close to Tampa Bay, and the Alafi River. The Alafi River, he goes right into the bay. A lot of good snook and redfish. Uh, oh, my goodness. I miss that place. I wish I had enough money, I'd buy me a place down there, and we'd do a lot of that. Okay, give me one second. I lost internet connection for a second. Okay. I don't see anything. Um, yeah, just one second. It lost it for just a minute. When, about when? Okay, let's back up. We lost it. Uh, ten more. Best bait? No, just on this computer. The uh, one I'm reading off of. Best bait for channel catfish. Here in the Tennessee River? He doesn't specify. It just says best. Your best, opinion on the best bait. Best bait. Well, I think cut shad's the best, but I should go ahead and do a video about shrimp. You can go to Walmart and get you some shrimp, and it's excellent in the wintertime for channel cats. It's great bait. They'll eat it up. Okay. Uh, Michael Dickerson, you ever uh, fish Smith Lake, I think he said? Lewis Smith, no, never have. But I've got a friend that lives on uh, close to that lake. It's a real deep, clear lake. There's supposed to be some good crappie fishing in it and spotted bass, but I never have. Uh -uh. Strong. Hmm? Strong. And strappers. Yeah, supposed to be some big strappers. Okay, Dust, Dusty Country Road wants to know, do you like the musky fish? Any tips if you do? I've never must. I've never caught a musky. The closest thing I've ever caught to a muskie is a, um, uh, what do they call them in Florida? Pickerel, chain pickerel. I used to catch them all the time in Florida. Any canal, any lake um, would have chain pickerel. And then, you know, that would be a big one, about 20, 22, 23 inches. Um, they look just like a pike, a northern pike. I catch them with top water repellents. Yeah. Uh, Michael Ivy left a super thanks, super chat, whatever you call it. God, Thank you. God bless you, brother. Thanks for the great content. I pray for blessings over you and your family. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, CJ Engines wants to know what's your absolute favorite fish to eat? Shellcracker. 
and bluegill. Matter of fact, I went and caught a bunch of them. We got a video on that. Big old shell, shell cracker or bluegill. Uh, I would rather eat them than crappie myself. What about you, Mama Sue? Yeah. That's my favorite. But do you like crappie better or bluegill? Bluegill. They taste better. They're, they they're taste. sweeter. This might be one for Mama Sue here. <coughs> Clem Ebbs. C37, how did y'all meet? How'd you meet Pops? Uh, we met at a, a party, but we went to school. Did we meet? No, we met at the party, didn't we? Yeah, but I knew you before the party. You would, you would chew gum, you wore them little old Jordash <laughs> jeans, and she'd walk through the halls, folks, and hold her book slow and she chewing the heck out of that gum, which you're not supposed to have anyway, <laughs> not at East Bay High School. And and looking straight ahead like she like nobody was even around and walking quick. I tried to get her attention and never could, you know. She was like too good for me, like you know. But I asked him to dance at a was a Halloween party. Yeah. At a Halloween party, and I subdued her with my charm. <laughs> Go ahead, though. <laughs> Did I know it? On it, Brewster. We went. We went to a movie one time, and then after that, it was nothing but fishing. <laughs> we caught a bunch of red fish and snook, didn't we? <laughs> um. Your bear wants to know what is uh, the biggest largemouth you ever Right had? behind me. I don't think they can see it. Can they not? I can move the camera, but no. can you take it down? Yeah, I will. If you... I sure will. We'll just take it down. Maybe I could pull the camera up. Uh, yeah, we can just set it back. Oh, that's a big fish. Here, let me pull the camera up. Or just grab the camera, grab it right here and show it. Just grab it right here and you can see it. Let's see, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I tried my best to get it off. Yeah, I caught that 1984. A little bit higher. 1984, it was 14 and a quarter pounds. 14 and a quarter pounds, big fish. Let me make sure I get it set back. You can just see it and I'll, uh, I'll do it. I believe that's about right. And I caught that fish flipping, a red shad culprit, 10 inch red shad culprit in Florida. Uh, we got another super thanks. Uh, from, I can't say that, but something <laughs> Enterprise. What is it? E S U O R K Enterprises. Oh. And he says, uh, Mr. G the Fish Machine helped me a lot with my crappie fishing. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, sir. I'm, Thank you. I'm sorry I can't read some of these. <laughs> I apologize about that. Thank you very much. Uh, do you use shrimp for catfish in lake? And Tan Moore wants to know that. Shrimp. How do you use them? You, you just use? peel them. You can get them at Walmart. I've done this way before I started this channel. But this time of the year, uh, there's some 35 and 40 foot water that I know right in the middle of the Tennessee River is where I'll fish and you can catch <laughs> um, channel cat and you can catch white river cat. They have pink eyes. A lot of y'all know what I'm talking about. They don't get real, real big, but they look like a blue cat, but they have pink eyes and they're white. And uh, shrimp, you just peel them and just put them on a circle hook. That's all you do. They'll eat them up. That they, they sure, <laughs> I mean, they'll eat them up. I should have done, done a video with that. Uh, JK, what careers did you have in life? My careers, I've done it all. Uh, the first job I had was uh, bagging groceries at uh, Cash and Carry in Riverview, Florida. 
And then I went from there, well, I know yards plus that to buy my first car. And uh, the first car I bought was a, what, what was that? It was like yours out there, Mustang. Mustang. When you crank it, I bought it for $500. When you crank it, black smoke would engulf it. And, <laughs> and then before you could go, you had to wait for that smoke to clear. And I had to prop the seat up with a two by four because it was it was broke, you know. <laughs> Second job I had was um at Bush Gardens in Tampa, Florida. And we tore down the alligator pen and rebuilt it. I was an apprentice carpenter for a local 696 and car uh, carpenter apprentice for the union. That's when um, unions were pretty strong. And then I did, did carpenter work for over 30 something years and uh, other stuff, whatever it took to, to, to make a living, raise kids is what I did. Sometimes I've worked two jobs, mm -hmm. if that's what it took. But, um, um, and then uh, that's, that's it. I'm just <laughs> work with my hands my whole life. Somebody wants to know, uh... About Deidre Melhorn, you watch Deidre all the time. Uh huh. And they want to know if you'd ever do a show with him. Oh yeah, I like Deidre Melhorn. I do. Uh, I don't watch a whole lot of uh, YouTube because I'm, I'm either working or I'm fishing. But I like Deidre Melhorn. These are the channels that I do watch. Of course, Jimmy Houston. I love him. He's my buddy. Catfish Dave. Catfish Dave. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, one Rod, of course. One Rod, One Reel, M Hood Fishing, and, and Rocky Drake Outdoors, of course. Hook City. And Hook City. So I guess I watch more of what, I, <laughs> what yeah. I thought, you know. They're they're just good people. I've talked to all of them. And of course, Steve Comalander, the old fisherman. And there's a small channel you've been liking a lot that's coming up. Fishing with Chris. Fishing with Chris. Now, now Chris is, uh, uh, he just, he don't live far from here in Tennessee. Of course, you got Creek Fishing Adventures, too. I, I watched more than I thought. I guess it's just when I get a chance. But Fishing with Chris, I like him because of his demeanor. You can tell he's just a good old boy, southern boy. And he's a good fisherman, too. And so is Creek Fishing Adventures. I believe they live around Chattanooga area, I think. I'm not for sure, but... Got a couple of super... And uh, I want to oh, say this. I'm sorry. One more thing. This is very, very... We lost a YouTuber that I did watch a lot. His name is Cameraman Ron. And I was going to get in a, hold, a hold of him one time to fish with him. He lived in the Panhandles. He was 40-something 40 40 -something years old, young guy. And uh, he left his wife and two kids behind. Um, he, it was a tragic thing that happened. And uh, that really touched me. Cameraman Ron. Okay. And if I've left anybody out, I'm sorry. Lojo. Lojo's another good channel. I've done a collab with him. He's a good guy. Uh, Jason <clears throat> Parrish and Cousin Cuisine left us a super... Thanks, which is oh. awesome. Um, Jason wants to know, ever fished the dead uh, lakes in, uh, you, you probably know this word, but we were. <laughs> uh, what we? W-E-W-A-H-I-T-C-H-K-A. -E -E Come look at it. I don't know. We can watch you. No. Wicca. Wicca. Wichica. Wichica. Yeah. The we. We Wakicha, Florida. Florida. Well, the answer is no. He's a parish. Is he a Jason Parish? Yeah. He yeah. may be related to you. My maiden name. I fished it. Yeah. Uh, no, sir. I never have. I never have, but I uh, fished all over Florida. 
though, but I've never heard of that. Shade Tree Catfishing says, <laughs> take that lovely lady to a movie now and again, Mr. G. I, she spoiled Shade Tree. I'm going to tell you, whatever, don't let anybody kid you. She is spoiled. I just got through buying her. We bought her two corgis. She's got a three, what do you call them? Eskimo Spits. Eskimo Spits that was flew from... Uh, um, he might have took me that one time while we were dating to a movie, but <laughs> the fishing was awesome, too. I mean, there was times that he got me out near close to a storm out there in the ocean, and it, it, was, it was fun times. Yes. Now oh, that's just giving me heartburns, folks. I don't I don't get Scooter's coffee. <laughs> it's got a kick. Scooters. <laughs> but don't get it because it'll give you some heartburns <laughs> for some reason. Uh Dreadneck let the super thanks. Redneck? Dreadneck. Dreadneck. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And he put he writes when you first start crappie fishing and never been shown how to find them, right? Where could you start on a lake and how? Love your channel even better when you talk about the Lord. Thank you. Well, it's so, my job to talk about the Lord. So his question I'm was, when uh, like a brand new fisherman? Yeah, a brand new fisherman. Where you can find crappie? Where to start? Structure. Uh, if there's any bridges around, lay downs. Any, uh, docks, that'd be a good place to start, especially in the springtime. Uh, crappie has, um, loves covered lay eggs. Docks is a great place uh, to make nest, lay eggs, treetops. Let's see, I done said that. Rip wrap, uh, that's what I fish on this channel. That's what I look for. And I'm pretty successful from the bank doing that in the springtime. That, that'd be a great place to start. We got another super thanks from uh, Pescando Con Milo. I hope I said that right. And he says, Amigo, you're the best, and he enjoys your videos. Well, thank you, sir. I thank you all for the uh, super thanks. I didn't know. Well, thank you all. Well, <laughs> thank you all a lot. And thank you for the comment, sir. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, CrossFit Guns. You ever fish Ditto's Landing in South Huntsville? D sure. Yep. Sure. Been there a lot. Been there a lot. I've caught some big smallmouth in that area. And crappie. Uh, you ever fish, uh, Chuck wants to know, Stevens, you ever fish Lake Wadawi? I never have, but I've been invited that, like two or three times. No, oh, here's, yeah. a, here's yeah. a tough one. There's some great fishing in it, I know. Fan of Liberty 1776. Walton's or Little House? Huh? Walton's or Little House? Little House for me. What about you, Sue? Sue loves those two. Little House. I'm a Michael Landon <laughs> fan. And um, there's something about... Um, uh, Laura? Laura, when she had buck teeth, it, she just cute as a button. And she'd make me cry. I can't watch a Walton's now without crying. I mean, a little house without crying. But I like them both. They don't make they don't make them like that no more. They don't. Everything that you're watching now is sending a bad message to kids. It really is um, that it's okay to do things that's not okay to do. I don't like what's on TV right now. It's not worth watching. A lot of this stuff. I'm sorry. I, that's just my opinion. Um, get that out. <laughs> it just come out. Mike Hudson, what's the difference between your boats? The, uh, two feet. One of them's an 18-footer. And uh, that Grizzly is a great boat. It's 18 feet long, real wide, roomy, great filming boat. It's actually a good catfish boat because it takes waves real well. It's not wobbly. Um, and the other boat I like um, is 16 foot, kind of narrow. But it's a good one to maneuver around docks. Like if I'm, I'm skipping docks, I can't do that with that big boat. It just won't get into those places. 
is um, olive weld is the one that I like for crappie fishing, really. But they're both good boats, and I need them both for what I do. Sisu, have you ever been ice fishing, or do you like ice fishing? I've never been. I always wanted to go, but it don't never. We don't have ice fishing opportunities here. I always thought that'd be fun. Um, what is that other channel? That guy that looks like Kevin. Oh, uh, Pig Patrol. Like Pig Patrol. Pig Patrol. Yeah, I'm gonna give a shout out to him and his wife. He give, he, <laughs> he he tickles me. That's another good channel. Uh, he does a lot of ice fishing, and he, he tickles me because he looks like my son. One of my sons, Kevin. Um, I have two, Kevin and Derek. Derek's in my, he's my editor. Uh, but um, Pig uh, Patrol, what is it, Pig Patrol? I think so, yeah. He is a mess. He really is. I like to fish with him and stuff. <laughs> That's um, what he says. Garrett Webb, um, can we expect to see any Jimmy Houston next year? Well, I just got through talking to Jimmy Houston uh, a couple, two or three days ago, and he um, he said anytime I wanted to come up there and fish with him, that, that come on. I love being around Jimmy Houston and his family, uh, his daughter Sherry, and, and of course his, his wife. They're, they're some of the best people that I've ever been around. What you see in Jimmy Houston is Jimmy Houston. They What you see is what you got. And that's the kind of people I like to be around. He's a good Christian man, and he is a very tough, uh, what do you call it, gritty country boy. That's just all they are to it. Very energetic. 77, is he 77 years old? What you say? I believe he is 77 years old, and he goes like nobody's business. Um, tough. Anthony wants to know, do you like brush hogs for bass? So I'll probably go see him again and fish with him, yeah, to answer your question. Brush hogs? I do. I got a bunch of zone brush hogs right here. That's a, a great bait to fish in the Coosa River, Gunnersville, anywhere I've ever been, even in the, in the river. Down the, up and down the Tennessee River. It's just a great bait. Um, dang, I lost it. Oh, it's a funny one. Russell wants to know, what's the hardest Russell. Mama Sue ever hit you with a frying pan? Let's see. I'm fast. I'm so quick. I, even now, I can probably outrun y'all can I, on feet, but... <laughs> I'm a good dodger. I don't think she's ever connected yet. I'm, I'm extremely quick. I'm, I'm elusive. Quick. The hookster wants to know where Elmo's at. Who does? The hookster. The hookster? Yep. Elmo. <laughs> it don't take much. Four or five more sips of this stuff right here, and Elmo will be out. <laughs> He's close. Uh, Ronald wants to know a little more about catching crappie in the winter. In the winter time? Uh, to catch crappie, you know, they're different in, in different parts of the country here. You're either going to have to fish for nest baits or underspins when they're up shallow or finesse baits if they're deep and inactive. Uh, hair jigs is real good this time of the year. Matter of fact, this is the time of the year to use hair jigs tipped with small minners. In other words, hook and vertical jig with them. That's a good, good, that's about time for the, for us to start doing a little bit of that too. Usually when I'm catching crappie doing that, I'm catching the big crappie. But there's it, weather conditions dictates how I have to fish. I can't fish a certain way or with certain baits. So when it comes to crappie fishing, a good crappie angler will have a little bit of it all. In other words, one inch baits, inch and a half baits, two inch baits, up to three inch baits, and all of them in different colors. Now, when you open your tackle box, it needs to look like a Christmas tree. Um, got another super thanks from Cruising Cuisine, Cuisine, and he's left us a, a lot. They have. 
Crimson Kazan. Yeah, and they want they're asking you to tell um, their daughter Nora happy birthday in a woo. Nora, Nora, happy birthday. How old is she? Woo! Did they say? No. Well, happy birthday, Nora. Uh, Spooky Souls, Souls says that <laughs> Spooky Souls. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a reference to that Dark Souls game. Oh, okay. Um, it would be cool if you did a fishing video with Bill Dance, which we, we've tried to reach out to him, but uh, we tried to reach out to Bill Dance once, but it's hard. What it is, his editors. His editors, I have an editor that's in control of everything. His editors are in control of everything except for, I don't think that Bill Dance, I can work with a computer a little bit, but I'm not computer savvy, not like my son here, but I don't think they've ever contacted Bill Dance. I love the fish with him. I've watched him ever since I was a kid. Love the guy. Um, that's all we had to watch on TV back in my day was Bill Dance, Roland Martin, and Jimmy Houston. And I've got to fish with Jimmy Houston. As a matter of fact, become good friends with Jimmy Houston. They're just uh, legendary bass fishermen, and I love them all. Another super thanks from Kenneth Cooper. Kenneth Cooper, thank you. When you gonna, uh, when you going to let people go with you? And fish a day with Gene like a charter type fishing trip. Do one a month if you have time or something. Yeah, I need to start doing that. There's no doubt about it. Um, what what hinders me from doing it? Not making excuses, but um, this this business right here, <clears throat> YouTube, is so intense. Um, to to just to make one video takes a lot of work. To put two videos out a week it is almost exhausting, folks, really, and to do them right. Um, what it is, I've got into a habit or into a routine of fishing, keeping up everything around the house. And it, it just seems like one week passes, then the next, and the next, and the next. It seems like... I just don't have the time. I'm just, I'm not, either I'm not managing time right or something, but I need to definitely do that. I do. Another super thanks from um, e uh, e e Enterprises. Um, this one is for Mama Sue to get a new lighter frying pan for throwing since you can't catch him. <laughs> He's, That's a good oh, idea. My goodness. What's his name? I can't pronounce it. Don't give her no ideals because she'll burn sure thinking. You know how a woman is. If a woman ever gets anything on their mind, they won't let it go. They're not like us. No, sir. They never let it go. The heck she'll with do cast it. Iron. Well, I'll be watching for it. I guarantee you on that. Cause it's, oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 I'm just try to miss. Wow. I'm gonna have knocks on my head, ain't I? Um, still learning, wants to know, what percentage of the time do you use a bobber when you're crappie fishing? Uh, when, when they're very inactive, like a, I actually caught, well, yeah, we got a video coming up like that. They got really inactive. We had two fronts, boom, boom, like that. And I couldn't get on the hit anything, but I knew where some crappie was in an area. So I caught them um, with a small flow, small jig, doing just, just that. Um, when fronts are really bad, when they're really coming in, boom, 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 on top of you, that's a perfect time to do that. <clears throat> but once you find their depth, ever how, ever how deep they are, you can, that is vertical fishing is what it is. You're holding that bait right in front of their face, and eventually they're going to snap it up, even if they're inactive. Great way to keep catching fish. That's what this channel is about. 
is to catch fish when everybody says, I oh, ain't no need to go, they ain't biting. Fish somewhere on any lake, on any given day, there's going to be some fish biting. Uh, Non-typical just says, hi, Richard. Hi, Mama Sue. How hey. you all doing? Who, who is that? Non-typical. Non-typical. Okay. Chris Bankston says, why do you like braid, and what is the lightest you can get away with from the bank? From the bank. I use eight-pound test braid normally when I'm fishing for crappie. Now, the reason why I do that is because, especially on the underspins, I can get a longer cast. If I'm fishing in really shallow, clear water, a long cast is real important. Braid manages on the spinning reel much better than fluorocarbon or mono. And um, when it comes to braid, the crappie's not line shy. You can actually tie it direct to an underspin. You know, if you don't want a leader, and that way you, you can do that, and that will improve your sensitivity. But braid is just hard to beat for crappie, and eight pound test is as, is as light as I'll go down. I don't like six pound test braid, I've had too many problems with it. Um, Jonathan Barnes wants to know you have a, a bucket you put your fish in, it's got a yellow lid. He wants to know. Yeah. Where you got that? He's been um, looking for one. Yeah, see. Let me. Ha, ha, ha. Woo! Y'all just hold your taters just a minute. I'm coming. This was given to me years and years ago. Look here what a crankbait race Costello sent me, folks. And if y'all remember, this is the pocket fisherman. That thing was, they advertised that back when I was about 10 or 11 years old. But anyway, this is chemicals for a swimming pool is what it is. It kills allergy and or organic contaminants. That's all it is. Chemicals for a swimming pool. And the guy gave that to me years ago. He had about six of these that he offered me and I just took one. I should have got them all because I ain't seen any sense. But that's a handy bucket. Josh Blake left the super thanks. He didn't put a message but he donated a stream. Thank you Josh. Thank you very much. Wow, you're going to be able to buy several of them frying pans and knock me up in the head with it. <laughs> um, okay, another super thanks from Dalton. Um, Dalton, thank you. Hope, hope all are doing well. Been crappie fishing today. Been catching a lot of smaller crappie, very few, <coughs> 10 plus. Any suggestions to target the, the larger crappie? He's not doing anything wrong. He's just catching what's available in his area. If you're catching crappie, you got it. You got it figured out. Now, it could be those bigger fish are moving to that same area. I've had that happen. Um, that's something you can't really help as far as size of crappie. Uh, when you're catching them like that, you're, it's really a big deal. But now, if I'm going to target the bigger fish, a lot of times I'll get away from a pattern like that. And I'll fish with an underspin. I'm on an underspin right now. Fantastic. It's been proving to me, folks, time and time again, what a big fish bait it is when crappie are shallow. They will kill it. I hope that answered that question. Alan M. left the super thanks, and he just says, enjoy your videos. Thank you. What's Alan. Alan, thank you, sir. Thank you for the great comments. Okay. I can't get over this crankbait. Golly, oh man, oh man. Okay. Wait, hold on. It's getting away from me. Um, a hardy farmer wants to know. What do you think is the best spinning rod for brim and crappie? Woo. <laughs> spinning rod? Yeah, for brim and crappie. 
there's so many, you know, I do, I talk a lot about um, these rods right here. Sorry. These are sow belly rods. They're made in Huntsville, Alabama. I talk a lot about them because uh, <clears throat> the rods that you buy at Bass Pro Shop is, in, in, in my opinion, are overpriced, okay? Everything in Bass Pro Shop is overpriced. And these are custom-made rods. And this guy does a great job. They're sow belly rods. And I think a ultralight, Six and a half foot rod covers crappie, bluegill, shell cracker, all of it, along with about a 1,000 size spinning reel. I believe that's a, a good deal right there, in my opinion. But that's not the only rod. I'm just saying <laughs> a lot of these rods are just overpriced, I think. Okay, let me get this. Everything is now, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But now, that's just my opinion. Uh, Kleckler left the Super Thanks. Uh huh. Uh, Thank you. Will you tell his, their son Hollis go fishing with, with your daddy because it's good for you? Thank you and God bless. Hollis, go fishing with you, daddy, because it's good for you. <laughs> And your daddy won't stir you wrong. He'll teach you. Teach you right. Okay. Uh, another super thanks from Mark. Uh, have you ever fished Indiana before? Never have, but I know Indiana's got some big walleye and big smallmouth. I'd love to go down. Uh, that north. They got some big fish up north. I'd love to catch a walleye about like that. Willie Nilly says, Merry Christmas, Richard and Mama Sue. Willie Nilly. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Willie Nilly. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Michael says, Props to Mama Sue for letting you do what you do. Woo, Merry Christmas, woo. Thank you. Uh, Trail Runar says he really enjoys. Your videos, not a lot of crappies in Massachusetts. Really? Uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I can't say I never can say that. It's hard. Massachusetts. Man. But he enjoys yeah. watching you catch them. What's his name? Uh, Trail Run R. Trail Run R. Well, that's unfortunate. They need to be stocking programs. They need to correct that. Because they're a fun fish to catch, and they're delicious. They get big. They do here in the south. Okay, Josh Blake, sorry about that. I missed his, he left the super thing. Thank you. Uh, he wants Josh. to know, what do you think of live scope and will you ever use it? Live scope? You know, I, I have mixed feelings about live scope. When it comes to technology, there's no way you're going to stop technology. Um, you know, because I remember. I started off on a flasher unit, a man's flasher unit, and then I graduated into what I, I have a good one out there. It's a Garmin, and it shows detail, details, but it's not um, if I forward facing the sonar. I know that there's a lot of uh, opinions about it when it comes to tournament situations. A lot of people believe it needs to be banned from tournament situations. A lot of people believes that it's like playing a video game. Um, it, a lot of people just believes it's going to ruin our fisheries by having that type of technology. Let me tell you what I think. I think this, to each his own. Now, I don't want it on my boat because this is the reason. I've spent years and years and years and years learning how to locate fish. They call it the old way, but it's not the old way, folks. Just think about it. I have spent so many years learning how to locate fish the hard way, building up, building up, building up, building up to where I am right now, to where if I were to try to use a forward-facing sonar 
it would absolutely take away years and years of hard work on my part. And so I have a lot of comments and stuff about that. Richard, thank you for not using forward-facing sonar. We would rather not see a video game on the screen while you're fishing. You know what? I understand that. And I have a lot of people that tell me that, so I'm not going to never have it on my boat. I don't need it to locate fish. Now, that's just me. That's just me. But if somebody else does it, that's their business. You see what I'm saying? I don't dislike them for it or have any, <laughs> anything hateful to say about anybody that does it. I mean, to each his own. But I... I've been offered the thing for free, you know, to be put on my boat for nothing, installed, just to advertise it, and I don't believe that'd be right for me to do that either. anyway. I really don't. So I, I buy my own stuff, and I don't accept sponsors or anything like that. So I was about to say, we don't advertise I, I don't anything. want to ruin the sport of fishing. It's more, to me, it is like playing a video game. You see the fish out there, you cast to them, and that's just all they are to it. Anybody could do it. Um, Rocky Drake has one on his boat, but he primarily uses his to catch bait. And, and it's a plus for him, especially in the summertime. But as far as locating fish, he don't use it, uh, game fish, he don't use it for that. But he does use it to locate bait and catch bait in the summertime. And um, they're easy uh, to operate. I could, I could operate one like that, but I don't want it. Y'all don't want it, so I'm not going to use it. I respect y'all. Y'all have built this channel up to what it is, and uh, I love y'all. So I'm going to hold yeah. my hand up, too. Got a super thanks from uh, XX Dark A Mus XX, and he wants to know... Or they want to know. Thank you, XX. Why don't you ever show the good docks on the end of the lake waist in your video? I'm sorry, the end of Lake Weiss in your videos. Why don't I ever show what? He says, why don't you ever show the good docks at the end of the lake, uh, of the end of Lake Weiss in your videos? There are way better docks. I know you know this. Are you doing it on purpose? No, I don't know that because I, I don't fish uh, Lake Weiss a lot. I've never had anybody show me around the lake. It's a big lake. What I do is I just put my boat in and I fish dock after dock after dock. And when I find some on it, I catch them. So I work for the fish that I show. And um, I will, I, I'm not holding back anything as far as baits, techniques, location, or anything like that. I'm not like, I'm not like that. I don't have that in my um, my soul. <laughs> so I didn't know there was better docks to fish. I didn't. You I don't ask nobody lake. for nothing. I just go find my own fish, folks. It's a big lake. It's know. a big lake. Q, Stead Q, howdy from Michigan. I love uh, <laughs> seeing Mama Sue fish. She reminds me of myself. Funny, yet we always catch them. Woo. That's right. She always catches them. She has beat me before. She has. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, there was one that I missed. Um, I was going to ask you. But Turner says, uh, super thanks from Turner. Turner, thank you. Love your videos. Thank you. Uh, Brent says, Mama Sue, you are awesome. How about a, a, a fish fry cooking video? Greatly appreciate everything you do. Yeah. Okay. That's two. Okay. That's, that's two. Okay. Well, I know it's been more than that. I, I'll, I've seen a lot of comments. People, we're going to do that. Okay. Okay. You, uh, Billy Sims left the super thanks. Thank um, you, Billy. And he, yeah. No uh, message. Well, thank you, Billy. Y'all so, don't have to do that. But uh, I didn't know. I forgot about that. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> thank y'all very much. Let's see. Ah, the hook stuff wants you to say, "Ain't the no hook stuff. 
<laughs> ain't no woman going to tell me what to do. I ain't either. Gave us a super thanks. I'm in trouble. Brent, thank you, Brent. No. Oh. Let's see. Uh, thank y'all very much. Yeah, a lot of people, or a couple of people are saying um, th that uh, live scope is still harder. And that's not what you said. You're not saying that it's not, it makes it easy. It's just that you don't use it right. No, no, because, you know, I know folks that's got live scope. They talk to me all the time about it. And it says you can see the fish, present your bait, and it's aggravating to watch those fish turn away from from the bait. Just because you have live scope don't mean you're going to catch the fish. Yeah, he's You not have to catch the fish in, in the moment that these fish are, are biting or active, or you're gonna to have to catch one of those fish to stimulate the scope to, to catch them. But um, no, I mean, don't get me wrong about that. Folks who use this live scope, that's fine. That's their prerogative. You can't stop technology. Um, as far as I think hurting the lake, I don't know how it can really. Because most people that I know <clears throat> here in the Tennessee Valley, Lake Gunnersville, all the way up and down, they only keep the limit of fish, and most of them won't even keep that many. There's a lot of catch and release here. Uh, we respect our fishery here. I don't think that live scope is going to hurt fishing in this area. I don't. So, you know, it's just... Um, it's just an issue for people to, to ram, 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 and then cause drama. That's what I call drama, and I don't want to partake in anything negative uh, or any type of drama because it's not my nature to do that. To each his own. <laughs> that's, that's the way I look at it. Final option. Super thanks. $100. Yeah. Final option. 100. Folks. Your one handed friend from the rant that you gave your time and shared a moment with is buying y'all dinner. I told you how much you've done for my life, and I wasn't kidding. Have a merry, crappy Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, he's not saying anything against live scope. It just, no, no, no. A lot of people, some people enjoy it, some don't. If you enjoy it, use it. If you don't, don't use it. I don't need it. I can catch a fish in a mud puddle. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, um, Elias says, love you, Mama Sue. Um, yeah, I, I hope I say it right. I don't, some of them I don't know if I'm saying right, but. We love you too, Elias. Billy Sams, great to meet you at Real Foot. Hope you're enjoying the Johnson 80. Oh, yeah, I remember him. Remember him? <sighs> yeah. While you're doing that, this Kate, reel right here, that's, says, that's my uh, favorite vertical jig and reel, folks. It's an old, old reel. And uh, he give it to me. Uh, yeah. Kaylee says, wants to know about a uh, winter catfish video. Kaylee, I need to be doing some of that, but I've been <laughs> having so much fun with these big crappies. I can right there. Oh. <laughs> uh, these big, these big, I've been catching a lot of big crappie. Got a lot of videos about it. 
and I just can't get off of those crappie. But I need to do that, I know. Backwoods Jeff says, um, Backwood Jeff. And that was a super thanks from Billy. Thank you, Billy. And this is also a super oh. thanks from Backwoods Jeff. Peace and joy to y'all. Oh Love God. your videos. God bless. God bless you, sir. Thank you. A lot of people are saying, or uh, well, I'll read this one specifically. Papa Sway Mathis, my favorite show was with Mama Sue in the river. <laughs> it was mine too. I'll never forget it. <laughs> Look, can yes. I tell the story real quick what happened? Can I tell the story what happened? Oh, my synchronized <laughs> swimming. I got my I got my waders. I got my shoes from Cabela's. They were felt bottom. They will not slip. I mean, they're just not slip. Good ones. That can keeps. I didn't get Mama Sue any, but I bought her some waders. So we went to uh, Academy Sports, uh -huh. and they convinced me that these boots right here, Richard, they didn't have a felt bottom, will not slip. <laughs> <laughs> they, they slip everywhere on them rocks. There was algae on them rocks. And, and, it, and it wasn't slipping. intentional. I thought, you know, I took their word for it, and uh, but uh, <laughs> she went down a couple good ones, but the water wouldn't be. But I laughed until my side. I lost my breath laughing at her. That, that was something I'll never forget. I don't. I won't either because that was good tasting mountain water. Oh yeah, that's spring fed. Mm -mm. Uh, Josh wants to know what's your favorite little Debbie. My uh, Jimmy Houston. <laughs> Josh, I just sent Jimmy Houston. Some zebra cakes. Zebra cakes. Cream pies. And some cream pies. And some Pepto Bismo <laughs> with them. Because that's his two favorite. <laughs> but yours is what? Raisin. Though I eat those for a lot for years. Yeah, but your favorite's the raisin the, uh, pies. The raisin pies. The raisin <laughs> cream pies are the best. But um, I'm going to have to quit eating. I, I did have a flat stomach, and I quit smoking about a year and four months ago, and now I'm eating too much. Now I'm getting a belly, and I got to watch it because food, food tastes, tastes good. Better. When you smoke, you don't really taste food too much, or I did, but now I love to eat, and I better slow it down. I'm over 200 pounds now. Oh. Um. <clears throat> Mama Sue, do you use, it's from Jamesia Dog. Mama Sue, do you use a store-bought breeder for frying fish? I don't know why that's doing that. Or do you make your own? Breeder? Bread? Breader. Bread. I'm sorry. Breading. I'm sorry. Oh, breading. I buy uh, white lily, cornmeal. And, uh, so do you make your own or do you just buy store-bought? I buy store-bought. Oh, okay. Heavenly Hills. Started watching your videos in 2020. Been hooking up on uh, big fish using your techniques ever since. Good. That's what we want. Let's see. The sport of fishing is for everybody. Especially this day and time. You need to get away from the TV and get on the lake. Let all that stuff, not watching you no more. That's a good idea. We need a channel where I missed it. A channel for Mama Sue to show your mess ups. I do a bunch of it. It's hard to live with me. <laughs> uh, Bud Coates wants to know, how did you quit smoking? I prayed about it. I've been smoking for how many years? 30? Uh -huh. 35 years? Mm -hmm. And uh, what had happened, um, you know, this is something I've never felt guilty about smoking, but what had happened is I got under conviction. And what that means is every time I'd fire one up, I'd feel uh, a depression. I felt uh, a guilt about it for some reason. All of a sudden it started happening and I got tired of that and I got to thinking, well, Somebody's trying to tell me something, and I'm serious now, folks. 
So I just uh, went ahead and listened to that voice <laughs> or that feeling, and I threw them down, and then um, I prayed about it. And it took about two weeks, and I was done with it. But I'm going to tell you what, after you do that and you've smoked that many years, you, you realize as your lungs are healing how much damage you really done to yourself. And what had happened is it took me about a year before I could breathe good again because it took that long for my lungs to heal. But they're still healing now. But I feel so much better. I've got a lot more energy. Um, he doesn't cough like he used to. No, I'm just getting better all the time. But, but in that, my blood pressure went sky high because my body wanted that nicotine and it caused me all kinds of trouble quitting, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It's weird, it just did that to me because I'm a hyperactive person anyway. I can't stay still. I'm, all, I'm either working or fishing or something all the time. So I believe it was extra tough on me, but okay. Uh, Cod Casey's YouTube says, you can do it if you want to. Okay. This is from Cod Casey, you, YT. Cod Casey. Richard, you have saved my life before I found your videos. I was lost and drifting quick as I found you. Your videos make me smile over and over again, and you somehow brought me out of my darkest times. Well, what's his name? Casey. Casey. Casey? Um, what happened right there is the Lord did that. Um, I drop as many seeds as I can. I'm not a preacher, but I know what it is to live hard because I've done, been there and done that. I've done a lot of things I shouldn't have done. When I was younger, I said a lot of things that I shouldn't have. Uh, you name it, I'm a human being. But as you get older, you see a lot of things. The Lord did that. Um, believe this, folks. God is great. God is good. There's nobody like him. He's the only perfect thing it's ever been. And he loves each and every one of y'all. If you got problems, go to God. Okay. So. What? Wrap it. Wrap it. Oh. Our time has run out, folks. Huh. I'm going to say this. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for everything y'all have ever done for this channel. Um, believe you me this. I love each and every one of y'all. Y'all have built this channel up to be what I thought we could do. We have accomplished. And uh, without y'all, this channel would be nothing. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. What do you want to say? Big thanks to everyone who donated to the stream. Thank y'all very much for donating to the stream. I wasn't aware of that until... It's not necessary, but... But thank y'all. The money be put towards gas. And feed Mama Sue tonight. Yeah, some beans. <laughs> And to buy a lighter pan. Taters. <laughs> hog snoot. Hog snoot. Yeah, you just take a pair of pliers after you boil it and pull the hair out. And pour some greased gravy over, over top of that snoot and eat it with them beans. Mm. 